Hello and welcome to today's video and I'm going to be going over what you can do with a small mini PC as a home server. Some of the pros, some of the cons and what you can achieve with this little thing. Let's take a look. So on screen at the moment you are looking at a mini PC and there are many varieties of them. You can get them from Dell, you can get them from HP, you can get them from a number of different vendors but they all tend to be a similar specification where the baseline model comes in about 4 cores, 8 gigs or 16 gigs of RAM and it will come with nice slow 500 gigs gigabit hard drive. Most will offer you USB 3, some will offer USB C, some will have DVI, HDMI. The variations are pretty limitless for it but the very good thing about that is because these are used in a more office based environment you are going to be able to pick these things up cheap online. So going on eBay, going on Facebook, going on Gumtree from marketplaces, you're probably going to be able to pick these things up for relatively cheap and so far that's what I've done twice. First time round to kind of get a play with one, see how it was and then the second time round was I just fancied a little bit of an upgrade. So you can see from the picture here these things use a fairly compact based power supply unit that just looks like any laptop charger essentially and these things are pretty good. I mean the CPUs in them use about 35 watts and that can kind of range all the way up to the 8 core model pulling that amount of um, power which is fantastic. Fans and the coolings in these is pretty good as well so yet to hear this thing get really loud and, and that's certainly a benefit with it being quiet and small you can pretty much place it anywhere and in some cases if you're looking to hide it a bit better maybe not want it on show maybe you are connecting it to the back of a monitor maybe you are hooking it up to a tv it does have options on there for mounts and stand options that you can screw on with most face amounts and make it just hidden so before moving to this mini pc i had something that was a bit um, high aspect and um, definitely not compact and definitely not power efficient and what you can see on screen at the moment is a fractal design define r4 case and i took one of my old systems to turned out to be like a Ryzen 2700X I believe, there's 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. I love this case because I thought I'm going to use this for media, I'm going to use a lot of storage space, I'm not going to bother with you no know, everything else and I wanted to basically have everything in one place, I wanted to keep expanding it, I was looking at hard drives and adding them by the dozen essentially. It didn't get used as much as I thought it would, hard drives were expensive and then in the UK power became extremely expensive so running something like this that even when it wasn't doing an awful lot still pulling a good 150 odd watts at idle and then when it decided it was doing something it was a lot more see i used it originally for media and transcoding just doesn't go well on amd with certain things so i was using jellyfin and essentially i didn't have the ability to transcode off of a gpu didn't put a gpu in it and then when it did have it in it i had some kind of pass through issues so it was just pushing the power on the CPU anytime it needed to crunch through anything it was loud noisy spent a lot of money changing fans on it to knock your fans to make it quieter and it just wasn't a good solution for my needs that is when I came across these cool little things so this would be the second one that I've got and the one that you're looking at on screen is the one that I purchased on eBay and I didn't pay a lot of money for it I paid £95 don't me wrong there is some upgrades that I had laying about that came out of that old system that went into this and you're not going to get well maybe I suppose you, you could with now SSDs nowadays but, but in general you're not going to get 20 terabytes in this thing so if you're using it for media and stuff like that your mileage is going to vary with how much you want to spend on an SSD to go in this but it will do M.2 and it will do a standard SSD 2.5mm size for the hard drive so what did I do with this little gem well I bought it for £120 which I didn't expect to win I ended up being the 6 core model which was excellent I paid paid about six pounds for an extra eight gigabyte stick of ddr4 ram and upped it to 16 gig of ram and then laying about my house i had one of these sabrent rocket one terabyte nvme drives which is generation 3 2500 megabyte read and write and a crucial one terabyte p500 which i think was about 500 to 600 read and write and essentially i built a mini server different flavors you can get for this thing as you can see this is the 800 model but they're all kind of similar they all look alike they just feature really better CPU, some of them have higher RAM capacity, slightly better graphics essentially. So as you can see the model I've got here is 6 cores and 6 threads, DDR4 support up to 64 gigabytes and some Intel HD graphics and the cool thing is I also got USB-C and I also got CPU that was compatible with Intel QuickSync which is excellent for transcoding videos if you're using something like Jellyfin or Plex. So what do I run on this you may ask? Well you could run a number of different things in your home server, you could run Windows 
Windows, you could run Linux, you could run a hypervisor. And what I am running here is a hypervisor. This is Proxmox version 8 and I've been using it for a few different things. So let me take you through what I have on my home server. So you can see from the specification, we've got the 6 core Intel i5-9500T. We have the 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And if we look at my storage here, we can see the two one terabyte drives shown. As you can see here, this isn't running anywhere near its utilization. We can see the CPU usage is fairly modest, keeping under 10% most of the time. The RAM is nearly eating about eight gigabytes of RAM. And at this very point in time, the network traffic is quite low, which is nice. Essentially, I'm running two Ubuntu virtual machines that are running the latest Ubuntu 2304, I believe, 2310 possibly. Just gonna move myself up to the corner here so I can show you everything that is running on these two Ubuntu virtual machines in this Proxmox server. So this whole interface here is Heimdall. It's essentially just like a dashboard to quickly go to these instead of having to use, you know, four or five, six, seven, eight bookmarks um, or remembering the IPs and the specific ports that all these services use. I can just go to this nice interface. I can input them once, it saves it. I click it, it takes me to it. It's fantastic. So I run a few instances here of Pertainer, which is for different things. I've got a couple that are set up for Cloudflare Tunnels, resolves all these services to a my own domain so I can access them out with my house. It means I don't have to deal with port forwarding. Um, I get a bit better security with it as well, which is fantastic. And yeah, it makes life just a lot easier. And I have a whole bunch of different services. I won't go through all of them, but essentially I like to host this more as a kind of media more than anything else. So, you know, I've got my audiobook bay where all my audiobooks are and I can access and they go. I've got Kavita for reading any of my comics. I have Jellyfin set up so I can access all my TV shows and movies. I can access my um, home security camera on there as well. If I'm looking to check that whilst I'm out and about and I don't want to use the app or perhaps I'm on, you know, a browser and I can check it this way. And then there's just a couple of services at the moment that I have running off of it, such as my Unify controller for my Wi-Fi access points in the house. So yeah, six cores, 16 gigabytes of RAM, two terabytes worth of SSD storage. I'm pretty happy with this as a mini PC home server. It's definitely doing cracking job, bang up job. As you can see by the resources being used, it's got plenty of room for expansion ability and you could see all the things that i'm actually running on it obviously that's not with it at load you know if if i've got five family members you know watching a couple of movies at once yeah that the usage is going to go up on it but for the most part it's pretty reliable Um, it's quiet it's small it draws next to no power i can't do anything but recommend these i, I think they're amazing little machines if you are looking to get into a home server or a home lab, this is a great item to have. So much more I plan on doing this and I'll probably make a few videos of them in the future. Essentially, we're going to end up doing probably some sort of firewall through this, you know, whether it's PF Sense or do something on here for some DNS ad blocking like Pi-hole or something along those lines. The abilities that you can do on these things is endless and there's just so many containers out there nowadays that I can't wait to play with a whole load of them. But if you have any suggestions for anything you would like to see, see what is possible with the mini PC as a home server, please pop them in the comments below like subscribe share thanks for watching